Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good day and welcome to the show. Today is <clears throat> October the 8th, a Thursday, 2020. And thank you for tuning in. Now, I'm going to make a statement to you guys and we're going to analyze it. Okay, the statement is, all of the world's wealth is going to be transferred over into three assets. Gold, silver, and cryptos. That statement sounds like, to me, what it sounds like when I, th when I think about it. If I just heard it and like, you know, well, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like baloney. <laughs> you know, if you just said it to me, if you said it to somebody or said to somebody out there, all the world's wealth is going to be transferred into gold, silver, and, and cryptos, possibly Bitcoin. It's, it's just, ah, come on. Come on, get real. <laughs> you know, but that's when you say it and you just, you, you don't use your logical side to, to actually analyze this thing. Uh, you just use your side that tells you, like, you're not, not. See, we all have two sides. We have a logical side and we have a side that goes through life and observes and thinks, is this, is this a possibility? And this sounds so outlandish that it sounds like BS. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. To be honest, it sounds like, it sounds like BS. But let's analyze it for a minute. Picture a train in your mind. That's what the Fed is, a train going down the tracks. Okay? Now, they did quantitative tightening. And they tried to back this train up. What happened? It was a disaster. So they started moving the train forwards again. Now, they, they realize now at this point what would happen if they try to back the train up. If they actually try to back the train up now, the whole system's going to crash. Everything in the financial system is all tied in together. The banks have tied themselves all in together through derivatives contracts. Uh, we have different parts of the market that if they if they implode on themselves, like the corporate bond market, can you imagine what that would do if that all imploded on itself? Um, the the banking system itself, you know, is overcapitalized, but still, I mean. Everything is vulnerable. The real estate market, can you imagine what would happen if the real estate markets just keeled over and died? The Fed has to keep moving forward with this because ever since 2008, in fact, back in 2008, we were already in this situation where they couldn't really, they had to save the system. They said that within two hours, if they, had, if they hadn't done anything to inject tremendous amounts of liquidity into the system, the whole system would have collapsed and frozen and stopped back in 2008. Well, that's a long time ago. <laughs> that's almost 13 years ago. How did they keep it running all this time if it's, if it's so vulnerable? Well, by injecting more and more capital and liquidity into the system. And it's getting to be ever bigger and ever increasing amounts. Now we have to realize this. We have to look at this as the first part, like in a chess game. The guy comes along and he says, hey, checkmate. And you're like, you're like continuing to look for moves on the board, you know. You're like, oh, I, mu I must be able to, uh, you're thinking about winning the game, you know. And all of a sudden the guy says, checkmate. And you're like, what, 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 where, where? You know, he says, and then you start looking. And when you look, you see it. You see he's got your king in check. So so you start looking all around your king to find these moves. So we're going to examine the moves. So we see that the first move now for the Fed to back up the train is it's a no-go. It can't not possibly happen at this point. They can't raise interest. See, this is one of their big mechanisms that they use. You know, as a conductor of the train, this is their, this is their throttle that goes forwards and backwards. Like, you know, is this mechanism to raise and lower interest rates? It's busted. Totally busted, guys. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's totally wiped out. So that's, that's not an option for them. So they can't back the train up. That chess, that's the same as, as, uh, as the guy says checkmate, and you look at your king, and, and you, you think you can back your king up under the, make it one move over that way, but you see that he's got his queen there, ready to kill your king. You can't do it. And that's the way with the Fed. They're blocked. They can't, they can't back the train up. So, 
We can eliminate that possibility. What's the next possibility? Well, they got to keep moving forward down the track. And this means injecting ever-increasing amounts of liquidity because if they don't keep it increasing it, what's going to happen is all these bubbles are going to pop and the system will freeze. Well, you say to yourself, well, if the system freezes, is it really all that bad? Yes, now we've got to the point where if they let a meltdown occur in the financial system, it's all just going to lock up. The whole thing will lock up. They have to keep the center part of the financial system running, almost like a person that falls into real cold water, or, or say you get caught out trapped in a real bad snowstorm up in the Arctic and you haven't even got a tent to get into, and your body starts to freeze and you curl up. You got to keep your central organs like your heart and your liver and everything functioning so your body will hold the heat there. And your extremities though, will be the first to freeze. Your body will actually haul the, haul the blood in from your extremities and, and you start, your fingers will start to freeze, your toes will start to freeze. Uh, that's the first thing that freezes up. And that's the way with the financial system. So the Fed's sitting back there and they're looking at this whole thing and they're saying to themselves, hey, you know, do we really want a lot of these smaller companies in America, you know, to become zombie companies? Because now at this point, the only way we can keep anything running at all is if we support it. And if we support it, it's going to be endless. So do we really want maybe a small mom and pop restaurant business to become a zombie company with us supporting it? And they're saying to themselves right now, they know what's happening. And they're saying to themselves, no, we don't. Let them, let them wither away. And so that's what they're doing. And they're letting this, chopping off as much as they can of these extremities right now. This is the situation we're in, believe it or not. And, and they're letting those extremities die, the, the smaller businesses and stuff. While the too big to fail, anything that's labeled too big to fail or, or vital, a vital industry like farmers and stuff, they have to keep that running and they know that. And so they'll keep supporting it to, and that part of the system that's vital, anything that's vital, it's kind of like your organs if you're freezing, you know, your liver's vital, so you got to keep the warmth there, you know, and that's what they'll do. And this is what we're down to. The system is actually dying. They know it, and they're letting parts of it die while they're going to keep other parts of it up and running at all cost. Things like food distribution. Things like uh, the military and policing and things like they're going to keep these things in Wall Street. They're going to keep their, them running at all costs. Okay, so this is the forward momentum of the train. And it's going to cost more and more all the time. So what this is basically leading to is an erosion. An erosion, a slow erosion of the dollar. Okay. Now, how far is this train going to progress down that track until the investors all realize the same thing? Right now, the investing community is like a herd, like a giant herd of, of buffalo, water buffalo. <laughs> That's what they're like. And some of them in the herd want to go to the right because they realize that the, the, the that the dollar's starting to die. The first ones are starting to want to go to the right, but it's not a stampede because the other half of the herd thinks it's going to de be deflation and they're going to the left. But at a certain point of progression down this track, the Fed moving forward with this infl in inflating the dollar and, and chasing after their 2% or higher inflation target, at a certain point, the whole herd of investors is going to realize, hey, it's inflation. Right now they're divided 50-50. Half of them think an inflation and the other half of them think of deflation and they don't really know what to do and they're not stampeding. But when they all come to that realization simultaneously, it's inflation. When that dawns on them, it's inflation. Then they're all going to panic and they're all going to do the same thing. They're going to stampede. And, you know, they're going to try to find places where they can preserve 
It's going to become preservation at that point. They're they're going to stop thinking in the way they're thinking now, making uh, making uh, uh, profit uh, yield. They're going to stop thinking yield, and they're going to think wealth preservation at that point in time because then the panic's going to set in. Okay, and they're going to realize the big percentage of them is the safe haven. They're going to want safe haven assets. Only a few are starting to go for it now, and we're seeing we've seen the price of gold pop up quite a bit from what it was, you know, and silver or two, and, and cryptocurrency. It's, I mean, you know, if you guys have been listening to my show, you guys would have been able to purchase, and I was telling you guys to purchase this stuff back when Bitcoin was like twenty eight hundred bucks, and silver was like, uh, silver was like thirteen twenty. And, and gold was like uh, 1180 or 1220 or something like that, you know. And I was telling you guys, hey, you know, this is the way it's going to go. Now we're getting an awful lot closer because the trains moved an awful lot further down the track toward that period in time when the investor suddenly dawns on them all. Oh, oh, we got to get into something that's going to, you know, gold, silver, or crypto. We got to get in. Because this this is a lightning storm on the golf course, and we all got to run for the clubhouse. That's what's going to happen, right? And I can't tell you exactly what that point is, but what I can tell you guys is there's going to be two big things that they're going to go for that are in a battle against each other for supremacy when all the money pours in. And, you know, I can see all of the money pouring out of the fiat currencies and into these three asset classes. And, you know, now that I've explained it to you guys, you can see it more clearly. And, you know, the first people out in the financial system, I'll say Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio, he already realizes that this is going to happen. You, you can bet he's, got, he's set in his positions. <laughs> you know? And the first ones, the smarter ones in the financial system, you know, they're realizing this already. And they know the final conclusion to all of this. But, you know, when you come out and you say the final conclusion, right, right out, you say all the world's wealth is going to pour into to these three asset classes, it sounds kind of ridiculous looking at it from the vantage point that we have right here and right now. Okay, there's going to be a battle. There's going to be a battle in all this. There's going to be a clear winner. And the two contestants that are battling it out are gold and Bitcoin. One of the two of them is going to win. Now, I'll tell you which one's got what what advantages. Like, it's just like a prize fight, and I'm pointing out the, the parts of the, the, what fighters got what advantage, you know, like if, if this was a, a big prize fight. Well, gold's advantage is is it's real and you can hold it in your hand. And this has a uh, a psychological advantage over over Bitcoin. Another big advantage for gold is is for 5,000 years it's been money and the whole world's financial system, most of the ones that's got the big money are old fogies. And they don't like Bitcoin. You know? And, you know, that's a big advantage because they kind of decide where the money goes. So there's a couple huge advantages for gold winning this battle. You know, that's like you're looking at gold's big muscles, you know. That's gold's big muscles, you know. Now, what about Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin's got a one huge advantage that it can be sent in instantaneously across the Internet. That is huge. There's another advantage that Bitcoin's got. It's got a hard limit of 21 million. Gold doesn't have a hard limit. They could come across a huge trove of gold someplace in the world that could have an effect upon gold's value. Bitcoin doesn't have this problem. Bitcoin's got a set hard limit. And so that's an advantage for Bitcoin. But which one's going to win this? Well, I'll tell you what I think. The train's going down the track. I don't know how far. It could be a quarter mile ahead. 
that the investors all of a sudden realize that, hey, this is the end of the fiat currencies, and they try to get into hard assets. It could be a quarter mile ahead, or it could be ten miles down the track. The shorter it is, time-wise, the more likely gold's going to win. The further it is out into the future, it favors in Bitcoin's advantage. So, so there you have it. And there is going to be a clear winner in this. Now, what about the loser? Is it going to become worthless? Heck no. Heck no. But the winner is going to be worth a lot more. But the the loser is not going to be at, not going to be worthless. The loser is going to be worth a lot too. You know, <laughs> I mean, this is like almost like a win win battle because they're go both going to absorb tremendous amounts of capital during this situation that's coming. You know, and I think that one of the things in gold's disadvantage though is is going to be the fact that they're going to run out of physical. So you say, well, they're going to run out of physical. How and when? I'll explain it to you guys. Do you guys realize how much money's out there that's being held by these money managers and, and, and funds, uh, uh, all the, out there, the entire system? How much money's out there in dollar terms? Okay. Well, less than 1% of that money tries to go into gold. All the gold's gone. <laughs> they won't. All the physical. I mean, it's all gone. If they, if less than one percent of that money. So, so let's say they that this does happen in the future, not too distant future, and they all go for gold, not Bitcoin. They all go for gold. Well, what's going to happen is it's just going to all the physical's going to disappear. Then how how are they going to uh, go for gold then? anymore. They're going to have to go for something, something else. So that's another little disadvantage for gold is the fact that it's limited in supply. It's going to work to gold's disadvantage because they're going to go out, they're going to want physical. They're not going to want any more of these, these ETFs. They're smart. You know, investors are not stupid. They didn't get rich by being stupid. So let's move in and take a look at the markets because I've been rambling on a little bit here. But you know what? Everything logically is pointing toward this actually happening, a wealth transfer, like has never been seen before in the world. A wealth transfer back into hard assets. Nixon did this back in 1971 when, we took, when he took us off of hard assets. And now we've got to a situation that's been created that's going to force everything back into hard assets again with tremendous worldwide craziness. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be really crazy. The rich people are going to become poor, and poor people are going to become rich. Because this is a wealth transfer on an unprecedented scale. And, you know, for you guys out there, you say, how much Bitcoin do I need? How much gold do I need? How much silver? You don't need very much. You really don't. Because when you look at all the wealth in the world, pouring into these assets. I mean, it's just going to be like, I don't know, a thousand times? <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. All the world's wealth of everything? Not just the money, but what everything's worth. What your car's worth, what your house is worth, what your land is worth. In the three little asset classes. Gold's the biggest of the three, but see, gold's still small. Like I said, less than 1% of all this money pours into gold. It's all gone. Uh, let's get in. Let's start the charts right here and take a look at what's going on today in the world of silver. 2389, going along sideways. It's up 12 cents, but really it's going along sideways, right in the middle of its range. Let's take a look at uh, gold. Live charts, gold. Uh, gold's up two dollars and fifty cents. It's on the lower side of its range at eighteen eighty nine. Uh, so it's moved halfway back up from that big smash it had the other day, you know, which is represented by the blue line on the chart. The green line is today, and it's moved halfway up through that smash. Let's take a look at cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies looks like it's going up right now. 
343 billion. Let me just refresh the chart. 343.8 billion, 58.6% Bitcoin dominance. We're looking at a Bitcoin price of 10,889.56. So it's getting up close to the $11,000 mark again. Dow Jones today, it's up 24 points. You know, money is really poured into equities big time. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what. Uh, we have the threat of, of little crashes, you know, in, in the Dow because it's went up so high. It's in nosebleed territory and, and the Main Street economy is deflating. But they're inflating this. And if it does fall off some, they're going to come in for support. Uh, and ultimately, they're going to hyperinflate the dollar. So I, I'm going to say that this is one of the places some of the money is going to pour in. You know, while they're hyperinflating. Well, you see a stimulus package coming along, and I think one's coming along pretty soon. I haven't looked at the news today about stimulus, but I think one's probably coming along pretty soon. And you're going to see this pop. It's going to go up. The Dow is going to go up on stimulus. Uh, and, you know, the last stimulus package, you see what it did. It brought the Dow. We've had a bull run ever since the stimulus package way back in March. And so the next stimulus package could create another four, four to six month long bull run. Uh, let's take a look now at uh, crude oil. $40.75 for crude oil. Let's take a look at bonds and rates. Now, we're seeing the rates falling today. They've been rising for the last few days. Uh, I think they're already doing yield curve control or some sort of, some sort of messing with the bonds. And the bond prices. Uh, we're looking at falling yields today anyway. And uh, let's take a look at our picture if I got it here. This is our picture of the day. Happy otter. You know, I like otters. I think they're awful cute. <laughs> otters. Uh, one of the cutest of the sea animals as far as I'm concerned. Uh, let's go back and take a look at uh, the U.S. dollar index. 93.62. It's where it's been for a while now, in around 93. And it's going along sideways today, more or less, with a few dipsy doodles up and a few dipsy doodles down. You guys have a great day. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.